Hi, and welcome back to your Pennsylvania Dutch Minute. And for the last couple videos, I've been really heavy on language stuff, which is good and it's important, but I think for the next couple videos here in our series, I'm going to turn in a different direction and do episodes about famous uh, Pennsylvania Dutch men and women, hopefully, uh, from our history and give you a little bit of background knowledge about some of these people that maybe you heard of uh, but don't know maybe the whole story or maybe you didn't even know existed. Um, who I consider to be pretty important in not only American history, but also in at least the history and culture of us, the Pennsylvania Dutch. And today I'm going to start off with one that most people have probably heard of, especially if you grew up in southeastern Pennsylvania, and that's Conrad Weiser. So let's talk a little bit about Conrad Weiser. He was actually born Johann Conrad Weiser. Uh, he was a junior, named after his father. And the brief overview, if you had to give like the elevator speech to anybody, was he was a Pennsylvania Dutch pioneer interpreter and diplomat between the Pennsylvania colony and Native Americans in this part of the United States at the time. He was a farmer, a soldier, a monk, a tanner, and a judge. And he contributed as a go-between in councils between Native Americans and the colonies, especially Pennsylvania, but he also worked uh, for Virginia as well for a little bit uh, during the 1700s, specifically leading up to the French and Indian War, or it's sometimes known as the Seven Years' War. So that's like the elevator speech to give about him. Um, but let's delve a little bit deeper into his history. Um, so he was born on the 2nd of November in 1696 in a small town in Germany. Well, it wasn't Germany at the time. It was the Duchy of Württemberg. And the town was Afstedt, uh in Hernberg, so in northwestern um present-day northwestern Baden-Württemberg. Uh, in 1709, uh, fever claimed the life of his mother, Anna Magdalena, and that area of... Germany, that area of Europe, was had been um, ravaged by French invasions throughout the last couple of years prior to that. There were religious wars going on, there was uh, pestilence, and there were some really long, cold, hard winters, which led to uh, decreased crops and decreased harvest. So a lot of Germans from that region left, uh, and Conor Weiser and his family were among thousands of refugees who left the German lands along the Rhine River from the Palatin area and so forth and traveled to England, um, where they were offered support by the Queen as Protestants who were seeking refuge. Um, they got there in 1709, as I said, and they lived in outside of London, in and outside of a London, uh, for about a year they were allowed to. And then in 1710, uh, Queen Anne uh, granted permission for them to be transported uh to the New World, uh, and it was at that time around 3,000 Germans uh, traveled to New York Colony, not Pennsylvania, and here's where Conor Weiser is considered a Pennsylvania Dutchman, but he didn't follow the normal route of the quote-unquote traditional Pennsylvania Dutchman that sailed right to Pennsylvania. He and his family sailed first to uh, New York Colony, and they settled in, and I'm not 100% sure about the pronunciation, but the Schoharie, Schoharie Valley, uh, which is near the Hudson River, um, in 1710. When he was 16 years old, uh, Weiser's father agreed to a local Native American's chief's proposal that young Conrad go and live with the Mohawks in the upper Squahari Valley. And during his stay in the winter and spring of 1712, 1713, Conrad Weiser learned a lot about the Mohawk language, customs of the Iroquois, and really, you know, assimilated to their culture the best that he could. Eventually, in 1713, um, he went back to his family, um, and he lived there then for about another, uh, so, I don't know, about seven years or so. In November of 1720, uh, he met uh, Anna Feck, who was also a German immigrant, um, and they were married in 1720. Five years later, they decided to move, uh, and they followed the Susquehanna River south and settled uh, and bought farmland in what is currently Wummelsdorf, Pennsylvania, which is in western Berks County, not too far from Reading. Um, together, they had 14 children, um, but only seven of those reached adulthood, which at that time period in history was, was quite common. So let's talk a little bit about, you know, Weiser's colonial service to the colony of Pennsylvania. And that began in 1731. Um, a very important um, Iroquois uh, chief by the name of Shikalemi, um, who was also part of the Oneida tribe, um, was sent to uh, discuss, you know, 
things with the colonials. Uh, Shikalemi had lived along the Susquehanna River at what is currently today Shimokan, um, Pennsylvania, near Sunbury, in that area there along the Susquehanna. Oral tradition tells us that Weiser met Shikalemi while hunting, um, and they became friends. Um, Shikalemi would travel to Philadelphia for a council with the province of Pennsylvania, um, and he took Conard Weiser with him. Um, the Iroquois trusted and considered him as an adopted son of the Mohawks, so Weiser impressed the Pennsylvania governor at the time and council, which thereafter relied heavily on his services. Weiser was one of the few white Europeans that were able that was able to communicate with the natives at that time period, and since they had taken him in as, a, as an adopted brother, he was really seen as a valuable tool on behalf of the, of the Pennsylvania colony. Um, there was a treaty signed in 1736. Uh, Shikalemi, Weiser, and the Pennsylvanians negotiated a deal uh, and a deed whereby the Iroquois would sell land drained by the Delaware River south of the Blue Mountains. Um, and since the Iroquois had not until then laid claim to this land, the Pennsylvanians, their agreement to purchase from them represented a significant change in policy towards the Native Americans. By that time, William Penn had already died, and he'd never really taken sides in disputes between various tribes. And this formal purchase... Um, worked out well for the white Europeans. This would be followed up by what would become known as the Walking Purchase in the following year, 1737. Um, that exacerbated some things, uh, relationships between the, the natives and the Pennsylvanians, um, mainly because we, the white Europeans, um, didn't necessarily stick to what we said we would do. Uh, and you can learn more about the walking purchase if you look that up online. And because of that, you know, during the French and Indian Wars, when that would finally break out, it's why most of the natives sided with the French instead of with the English colonial holders. Um, Weiser wasn't happy that a lot of these treaties were broken because he helped broker them in good faith, um, and of course would later turn back on him. Um, in 1737, Virginia also reached out to Weiser to ask, to ask him to help with some uh, treaties um, between Native Americans and the Virginia co colony. Um, and just to kind of show you how important or how, imp yeah, how important the Iroquois and the natives held uh, wiser, they gave him the name, and this is my best Native American here, Tara Chawagan, which translates as holder of the heavens. It's a pretty powerful name that they gave him. Um, 1754, we start at the beginning of the Seven Years' War to the French and Indian War. Um, wiser at this point had done a lot of things prior. Um, we know that the war, in, in the end, eventually the British would win and defeat the French and natives um, and push our boundary lines further, further west. And you can read more about that and, you know, just search that time period in history. But what we have to remember is that for all of those years, Conrad Weiser did help to keep a powerful Iroquois alliance with the British as long as possible. Um, and this is important. This important service contributed to the continued survival of British colonies, white Europeans, uh, and the eventual victory of the British over the French in the French and Indian Wars. Um, a side note about Beisel, which I think is kind of interesting, and I'll talk more about this group later on, but between 1734 and 1741, so before the um, French and Indian Wars, Weiser uh, had traveled a, a little bit west to the settlement at the Ephrata Cloister, um, which was run by Conrad Beisel. Um, I'll do a video on him separately in the future, who had begun and founded the German Seventh-day Baptist uh, group there at the Ephrata Cloister. Weiser and his family joined, um, although his wife only lived there at the cloister few, for a few months before returning back to their family farm. And then Conrad would, uh, Conrad Weiser would spend time between both Ephrata and um, Wummelsdorf. Uh, he eventually would leave that group in 1741 officially. Um, and, you know, when we look at a lot of these colonists of that time period, Weiser fit the mold in that he did a lot of things. He farmed, of course, but he also was a tanner. He was a merchant. He was a landowner. He sold land. Um, he helped draw up the plan for the city of Reading in 1748. He was a key figure in the creation of, of Berks County in 1752. He served as a chief judge until 1760. Um, he was also a teacher and a lay minister of the Lutheran Church in America and one of the founders of Trinity Church, one of the largest Lutheran churches in the city of Reading. Eventually, Weiser would die on his farm on the 13th of July, 1760, and he was buried uh, there at the, at the property. Um, 
Upon his death, one Iroquois Indian noted to a group of colonists, quote, We are at a great loss and sit in darkness, as since his death we cannot so well understand one another. Indeed, uh, sadly, shortly after Weiser's death, relations between the colonists and the Native Americans began a rapid decline. Um, maybe because they didn't have someone to help them talk to each other, just like Weiser had done for so many years. Uh, at the end of his life, he bequeathed almost 4,000 acres uh, as part of his farm to Berks County. And today, the Conrad Weiser Homestead in Wimmelsdorf is um, open to the public, uh, I think right now only for weekends. Uh, they do various reenactments there. Just check their website, search Conrad Weiser Homestead. Um, and then also his his family and his legacy would continue on and become very important in the founding years of the United States of America. Um, his, their daughter, Maria, married Henry Muhlenberg. Uh, I'll probably going to do a video on the Muhlenberg family because they were really important. Henry would be one of the founding members of the founders of the Lutheran Church in America. Their son, so Conrad Weiser's grandson, Peter Muhlenberg, would become a major general in the Continental Army during the Revolution. Um, his other grandson, Frederick Muhlenberg, would be the first Speaker of the United States House of Representatives. And a, his great grandson, Peter Weiser, uh, would go on to travel with the Lewis and Clark expedition uh, west to the Pacific in the early 1800s. Uh, his legacy also continues in today in that uh, Conrad Weiser School District is named after him in that part of Berks County. There is uh, the Weiser State Forest, which is 17,000 acres in Carbon, Columbia, Dauphin, Northumberland, Schuylkill counties. Uh, and also U.S. Route 422 is also named the Conrad Weiser Parkway from Lebanon County to the Berks County border to uh, Wilmelsdorf, Pennsylvania. So uh, Conrad Weiser, a really important Pennsylvania Dutchman. He spoke Pennsylvania Dutch, of course, and, I mean, really instrumental in the early years of the colony of Pennsylvania, particularly maintaining that connection between Native Americans and the white Europeans. Of course, we can argue over whether that was doing the right thing or not. However, I look at it from the value of him being able to interpret and uh, being a go-between, uh, always looking for peaceful resolutions through the ability of talking to each other instead of going right to war. And for that, I'm uh, proud that Connor Weiser was a Pennsylvania Dutchman. Um, so uh, we'll continue this series looking at, we'll definitely do a video on the Muhlenberg family. I'd like to do one on Conrad Beisel, uh, and then get to some people that you probably never heard of either, and including some Pennsylvania Dutchmen that you probably didn't even know were Pennsylvania Dutch that were pretty important, like Dwight Eisenhower, for example, future president of the United States. So we'll talk about that in future videos. If you have an idea for a video, email me. Um, Addresses at the end. Until next time, keep practicing your Pennsylvania Dutch and mox good.